Without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. And then what happened? Hey, this is what happens. You guys are now live in person. I believe that's uh, Daniel Elliott in person right there with Ginger Cook. Are, are you kidding me? No, we're not. We, we're, uh, not we're not kidding. Daniel, if you guys remember the last time he visited, he painted these awesome clouds for us. And uh, Daniel is uh, not only a professional artist and uh, extremely well known in the United States and throughout the world, but he's also the manager of Jerry's Artorama in Houston. And he's the guy that knows all about all art products. I don't care. You can't really stump him on an art question when it comes to products. Go throw him under the bus here. Yeah. And tonight, Ow. Daniel <laughs> is said he would demonstrate. You know, one of Daniel's things that he does is is uh, extremely well is palette knife painting. So he's going to show us how he does palette knife. You know, we've done a few ourselves. I'm just going to show you, uh, you know, a couple that you know you've seen. Um, for instance, um, live on on uh, on YouTube. I think I have one. This small little one, it's a little speed painting, right, of a palette knife, all right? And I think this is another one you can also do with a palette knife on YouTube. You know, it's a Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. And I think our Wave and Water Master Class are doing a, a Monet-style one. I'm going to show you like wow. that. So there are a lot of different ways to do palette knife. Now, we're going to see how Daniel does palette knife. He's real excited to do it. A lot of different techniques. You can learn something from every artist. And if I wanted to learn something about palette knife painting that I didn't know, Daniel would be the one that would know it. So you guys, we're in for a real treat tonight. And um, so Daniel, talk to us about what you're going to be doing here. All right. Okay. Well, what am, wait, wait. What you need? Would you like me to go down to the floor? I mean, down to the table? Well, I've been showing stuff on the table. Well, you know... <sighs> I've been showing all kinds of stuff on the table. Okay. I didn't hold it up, John, because I thought people saw it. Don't we usually start with you full screen, Ginger? H have you not it's been, been with me week. here today? I've totally had a senior <laughs> moment. I totally forgot. So I'm going to show I mean, are we changing again? the routine again. here? Let's show them again. All right. Where would you like us to hold this? Up like this? No, put it down on the floor now. Now, now I've got you. There now it's go. on the table. All right. So that's right. Our, our Monet Wave and Water Master Class. So you can see the texture with the palette knife. All right, that's done with palette knife and gels, and that's on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. And then I want to show you, this was the Van Gogh, People in the Rain. He originally did this as a watercolor, and now we have this on YouTube. You can follow this along as palette knife painting. And if you haven't seen this one, in fact, just go to our playlist, palette knife paintings, on, on YouTube. You see some different ways to palette, to use a palette knife. Now we're going to see Daniel do a palette knife painting, and he's limited his palette also. I no pun intended there to some colors, but we got. All right. We're going to start with Payne's Gray, a wonderful alternative to blacks. So it's going to be a bluish gray. Add some really wonderful deep value tones. Then I have one of my all-time favorites. It's called Mineral Blue. Uh, Mineral Blue is just absolutely stunning muted color. Then my duct tape, my Thalo Blue. I use this in everything. Uh, I find it to be the most useful of all the blues. Then for my light values, I'm going with my Naples Yellow Light, my Antique White. They're very similar. This one's a little bit more butter colored and a little bit of Titanium White. And then so, later on you're going to be using this gel here, And right? yes. If, when I go a little bit thicker, I'm going to be using a little bit of Golden's high solid. Now, now that's up down, upside down to us. Oh, that's upside down to you. Oh, yeah, it's just, right to me. Just, just <laughs> 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 All right. Well, here we go. High solid gel. All right. We'll just turn just it on. Just pretend right like you're showing it to yourself. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Well, here we go. All right. That's perfect. All right. So these are you guys. This is great because one thing we can tell you is a palette knife painting eats up paint. And and what what are we painting on today? All right. Well. Today we are going to uh, be painting on a linen panel. So a simple Centurion linen panel. I prefer these for small knife paintings. I am rather heavy handed and I've been known to tear holes in my canvas <laughs> with knives. Uh, I'm somewhat careless. It does take a little while to uh, 
to get that feel. Most will never rip a canvas. I do it quite often. And if I was in the studio, I wouldn't be using a panel. But since I'm live on the internet, yeah, I'm not going to rip a canvas in front of you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh darn! Well, it, happens. Exciting. it happens. It happens. It happens. It happens though. So no, I get what, these what, out of the way, way and, and I, I, brought, I brought some toys for Ginger, and possibly maybe another appearance. I'll do a demo. This is what's called a Lumacomp. Okay, this is an Lumacomp panel, and basically what it is is it's a two-sided aluminum archival painting panel. It comes nicely wrapped in this nice little plastic, but when we undo it, do that. Uh, and that's yours. You Thank get to you. play with that one. Yep. It has a smooth side, and it has a brushed side, and it even has the dents where I left it in my car and dropped stuff on it. <laughs> uh, so it is highly reflective, and it's absolutely one of my favorite painting surfaces. For a knife painting that's a little bit more opaque, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to work on the... Um, on the canvas panel, uh, my next uh, study in transparency for you. I will work on this, and you'll see just what a reflective surface can do. And I've never, I've never painted on a reflective, sur reflective surface like that. Um, you know, at least not intentionally. It's <laughs> <laughs> it, painting on something so reflective, uh, especially with your transparent jewel tones, uh, just gives it a glow that is impossible to mimic. It, it, it just, uh, you'll see. All right, we'll so the, we'll keep do in one mind another he's time. Got, he's coming by. So these are some of my presents for, for, for Thank Virginia. Thank you, and then uh, you're going to be then, using these signs. Wait, wait, you're going to be using right. these signs, right? All right. These are all my Creative Mark standard palette knives. They're made by Jerry's. And I have a favorite. This is my Excalibur. And no, you're not going to find one. I, I hate to tell you. It's made by Holbein. Um, it's a discontinued product, and it is all one solid piece. It is the one knife I will never break. And this uh, this one is my favorite. It's Hopefully someday to, they go back. It's, it's almost similar. identical. And I do use many of these. It's my favorite shape. The difference is this being one solid piece, no spot welding. Every once in a while, my heavy-handed nature will break a knife. And I've done it. Okay, but i got to tell you. It's so not easy guys, to do. I, I have never broken a palette knife. You know, I mean, unless I stepped on it or something, all right? So, and I've done a lot of palette knife paintings, and so, you know, it, it, Daniel's it's got his own technique. It's impossible, but that's, again, that's why I'm going to be painting on a, on a board as opposed to a canvas in front of y'all, because I really do not wish to break a knife in front of you and tear Perfect. open. Perfect. All right. Um, that's great. We're excited about that. Yeah. And now, since I'm a guest and I'm really happy to be back, I know Ginger is thinking about perhaps a trip coming in the next few months. And so I brought her some of my favorite things. Again, you're showing it upside down to I'm us. I'm doing it again. All right. <laughs> uh, this right here is a new product we're carrying. It's by Stillman and Byrne. Uh, it's a mixed media sketchbook. And even though there are lightweight pages, they're sized, which is uh, basically the glue binding that holds on the paper. Um, they are sized internally and externally on all sides, which means they don't bleed. And... Uh, with the exception of if you were to use alcohol-based markers. Alcohol will eat through the sizing and you'll actually see through from page to page. But... You can paint on both sides of You can page. paint on both sides and it will not show through. Oh, it's so cool. And, and we have been called, playing with this. This is a, a, a by Alpha, Alpha Series Premium Sketchbook Mixed Media, Dry Media Light Wash Ink. Perfect. And it holds paint beautifully. For acrylic and painting, yeah. You got it. And to go along there's with it. There's still more. There's more, you guys. This oh, is wait, fun. I'm doing it again. Gifty days are good, right, yes. you guys? <laughs> and I brought, I, 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 I brought you this for your next endeavor. Uh, Adventure? And, Probably and our next cruise, yeah. And that's going to be the, the Turner acrylic wash, which is this set will have everything you need to take with you. Oh. And I just flipped it upside down. Yes. See, I did that too. Yep. And so it'll have that a place for a your brushes. That's a palette, this, is, right? this works as a palette. Okay. And you've got your white. You actually have two of them because they're smart. They know. And it comes with a little color mixing card that'll kind of give you a chart on how to mix oh, the different oh, look, colors. Look at this, you guys. Look at this. And it's got the it's got the recipe on the back for the colors. How cool is that, right? It also gives you one of your imagination cloths. <laughs> oh yeah, good, good. And we've got your palette cleaner. 
and then a whole bunch of these wonderfully saturated acrylic gouaches. And really, the, the big difference with acrylic gouache versus regular acrylic paint is it's got a slightly lower acrylic content and a higher pigment content. So when these dry, they're going to dry very matte, and they're absolutely wonderful for mixed media application. You can actually do dry media right on top. So colored pencils, graphite pencils, charcoal, you can actually tone things with this and then go in with other media, or just go ahead and do a beautiful, beautiful painting with them. Oh, it's a gorgeous set. And then you came with some little brushes. Yep, came with little brushes, and there's actually a little ruler in here, too. Oh, no way. Yeah. Look at that, you guys. A clear ruler. A little clear ruler. I mean, what a cute set. So if someone were to, not to look a gift horse in the mouth, but if somebody were to go to your store and want to buy one of these, what would something like this run? Right now they're on sale for about $30. No that's way. all? Normally, and that's a great deal because normally this set can run upwards of $100. Oh, my gosh, you guys. So if, so. You, if, you, if somebody called up Daniels and, and, at your store in Houston, um, what's your number? Yeah, good. That's a really good question. You're asking me, I don't know. Uh, you can look it up on Jerry's Google. Artorama. Jerry's Artorama, Houston. Uh, uh, Is it I, seven you know I don't have code? a memory for numbers. All right, he doesn't know, but we'll post it in, in the credits. How that? Yeah. We'll post his number yeah, in the credits. Yeah, that's, that's better. You know, I was going to actually Daniel. write some stuff on my hand and... <laughs> Because uh, I do, I tend to forget certain things. Um, but you can, and, but, and a sketchbook would run what for people if they want to buy that? That right there is about twenty-two dollars, I think. Oh, that's beautiful! I, but you can do both pages. And, I love this. And, and the knives are running what about five to seven dollars a piece? Yep. I, I think these. I want it to say something. Flat. Wow! I want to say something about these knives. What I really like about these knives is I've been using Jerry's knives for about uh, eight years now, and they don't rust on me. And they, you know, um, there's a version of that. This, you remember, you may have seen a very famous person that's, that used to use a knife like this in palette painting. He's passed away, but his videos are still out there. And his knife, which, I, which is a lot more money, I've, in my experience, has rusted. These do not, and I'm one of these people that just leave them in the water and walk away. And you're, you know, of course you're not, mm -hmm. and, I, and the handles always stay good. So I think the best deal on the planet it for palette knives, certainly is what Jerry sells, and I love all these different ones. And speaking of brushes, yes, we want to just take a moment to. I'm going to take all this. Thank you for the present. We you're love welcome. Thank you're you. welcome. Well, last time I was here, I I had forgotten to bring anything new and anything excited, and I and I thought about it, and you know, you're so helpful to to artists all around the country and the world. I figured, you know what? Let me give you a present. Oh, thank you. And, and I thought you would like them. I'm going to put one of your panels back. And, and I've got out, you know, so my daughter's a cinnamon, the art sherpa, yes. has come out with her new line of brushes, which, which Daniel will have in his store. The um, order's been placed. They're coming soon. And uh, I just showed him some of, you know, these, and, and he wanted to try out one of these for an underpainting, right? Yes, or something today. absolutely. And these absolutely. are the silver brush panels. This is just some of the brushes. I'm doing another video, um, be releasing this weekend, hopefully Friday or Saturday. It's taken forever to upload. We're trying to get another, you know, I've got a beautiful video demonstrating some of these other brushes. Let me hand that can. Hand that can. Get. These are the ones that she's selling in the set um, singly, these, 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 these art sherper ones. I love these brushes. And I'm not saying that because this is my kid. She knows if I didn't like them, I'd tell you. On this set, that's the way I am. And these are these absolutely are really, great. really, really nice. I, I am very excited to have these in the store. Um, they've they're perfectly they got a perfect bounce to them, and I'm actually looking forward to getting to play with them because they haven't arrived yet. So as soon as they arrive, you know I'm going to be cracking out uh, a few packs of these and and doing some demonstrations in the store. So well, as we get started, Daniel, I'll tell you what. As we get started, um, did we, um, you want to start with your canvas and open yep. some stuff. John, do we have any questions? For yes, we have tons of questions. Thanks. Tons for of questions. Tons All of right. Questions. If they're hopefully they're not specific. Okay, we've got the uh, Jerry's phone number has been looked up by Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks, it's, Wendy. It's eight three two two three seven. Six zero seven zero. Now I remember. Is it coming back? Oh, he remembers it now, which is good. That's a good sign. <laughs> I, We've got the I'm right so one. Bad with um, someone would like to know: Does Daniel have a website, Facebook? Well, how do we know more about Daniel? Artist Daniel Elliott uh, on Facebook or D Elliott three thousand on Instagram. My website is still under construction uh, since last I was here. I had planned to have my site up, and then we had a, I don't know, a hurricane, and that kind of, yeah, Harvey was, um, 
it kind of got in the way of a lot of my my personal projects. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> going to say that uh, Daniel had a, has his um, his he's in the process of moving his elderly father, who you know has ha had severe illness for the last couple of few years, into a, a, a more care facility and, and emptied out the house. And Daniel lives fairly really close to me, and he had stuff his art supplies in storage while this transformation of selling the house would be so the house would look better you know uh, art supplies look a little junky anybody's house yep. unless you're an artist and you're going ooh cool most people are going what's that what is yep what are you pigs doing you know kind of thing you gotta clean it up so anyway apparently his uh, your your my, whole thing. my storage unit i moved nearly everything out of the house uh almost everything i own got moved to a storage unit so we can Help Dad sell his house, and then my storage unit got a got about eight inches of water. Oh, that's always good. Wash things. Oh, out. I was excited. <laughs> uh, that was like the best thing ever. But I'm lucky, and I'm not knock the wood handle here uh, on the brush. I, you know, honestly, I'm blessed. I, my house was fine. I, everyone is healthy, and the majority of my artwork will be able to be cleaned. Uh, I had one of my shows uh, I had pulled out of a gallery right before the storm that was actually at the house, so I do have some actual work of mine uh, that is dry, and the rest of it, it's you know, it's only a matter of restretching. Everything can be cleaned, so I got speaking lucky. Of, I dodged speaking a of work, this is a painting. Can you guys see it from behind? If you want to uh, sh sh give us a shot up, John. This uh, is a painting a that Daniel did two paintings in the last couple of weeks to raise money for the hurricane. Um, um, I hate to say victims. Well, that's what they know, are. But, but victims. <laughs> for artist relief. For efforts. artist relief. In other words, there's a lot of relief for other things, but Daniel actually raised some money for artist relief as well as Jerry's Artorama, the corporation. They've raised over $30,000 for artist relief because a lot of artist lots are art supplies, all their stuff. And, you know, insurance, you know, doesn't care. They're going, what did you lose? Oh, your toy's too bad, right? So, anyway, I think that's pretty exciting. But I love this painting. You guys, can you can see the, the swing? Kind of um, uh, under the water, little house back here, everything dark, the storm and the, and the rain. I mean, this is so brilliant. This just comes out of Daniel just, uh, he channels this stuff, I think. It's just great. And he will be selling prints of this yes. for the relief fund. So if you want interested in getting a print of this, do you have any idea what size and what they'll be? Uh, they're going to be approximately 13 by 19 inch prints. I'm waiting to hear back from my printer. He has got the digital file, and he'll be getting to them. Hopefully by the end of this week, I'll have the first uh, 25 prints uh, in the run completed. I'm thinking about between 100 and 200 prints, uh, limited edition. We're still in debate. Um, and then we're going to see what the overall costs are going to be on it. Uh, but keep a lookout. They'll they'll be available, and 100% of all the donations uh, uh, of all the print sales are going to Artist Relief here in Houston. So I think that's pretty exciting. So I mean, that's beautiful. I just think that it's just it's such a um, marvelous painting. All right, you yeah. want to get started painting yeah. while we're talking? Yeah, let me let, let me get going. You wait, start wait. painting while we're talking. Yeah, we got a couple more questions. Sure. Yet to go. Yeah, as he goes. Sure. Can what do we got? How do we get on the Houston Jerry's ad list? So we know what Houston Jerry's is doing. Well, if you go to our Facebook page, uh, Jerry's Artorama in Houston, uh, that will get you up to date. Uh, if you go to Houston-Jerry's.com, you can sign up for our emails as well. Okay. Good well, that's cool. cool. That's On nice the aluminum know. surface, yes. does paint stick to that or do I have to prep it in any way? Paint, if you're working in acrylics, acrylics stick beautifully and just as well as it adheres to canvas. Um, it is a little slicker of a surface, um, but it definitely, definitely sticks and adheres well. Oil paint slides around a little bit for your first layer, but after that, it is absolutely, huh, it's a dream to paint on. It's, it's actually my favorite surface now. So what are these cost to? Those run about the same price as your average uh, stretched canvas, so something like that. I didn't look. I always forget. Um, when I was thinking about it, I grabbed them, and I said, these would be great for ginger. And I didn't look at the price. I don't. Now, you'll just have to look on there. You know, probably about eight dollars would be my guess. Somewhere in there, eight nine dollars. Well, go um, ahead and keep going. Keep all right, I gotta painting. figure out what I'm doing here. Okay, so he was just so. playing with. We're letting him play with the art trippers. Yeah. Uh, those bright, those ones that were designed I'm, I'm, for I'm, underpainting. I'm, I'm, I've been dying. I, I've been looking at this since the. The ads oh, came out. Yeah, right? since the ads came out, and a, a synthetic in my brush sizes that I like, I'm. I, I'm just giddy. <laughs> yeah. It's the little things in life. 
just see. Well, the thing about it is, and, and then Daniel and I will tell you this, there's a big difference in brushes. And the Silver Brush Company is like your Ferrari of brushes. They that, make a it, really nice product. And, uh, you know, if you, you're talking about a good product, you know, there's a difference between, you know, you Chevy and a Ferrari. And I, I, I can't say that most mm. most of the brushes that you that you see are, uh, you know, that their lifespan is pretty short and they don't really, aren't really designed for paint and, uh, you know, that they, they want to make it all things to all people, a watercolor, acrylic and oil brush, which is nonsense because you can't have all of that. You've got to have something, but you can't have all of that. And so these were specifically designed for acrylic paint and Cinnamon worked with the, um, the owner um, for months and tried different filaments and different brushes until they found one that she felt really um, maximized the effectiveness that we acrylic artists need to get the most bang for our buck when we're putting paint on. In other words, the paint goes on the canvas, it doesn't go down the sink when you rinse it. How's that? Absolutely. That's a good thing. That's, no, that's, 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 that's what that, I would that, say. And that's, that, that absolutely. And it's, it's fr it I'm takes the frustration. These. They have Do a you nice like response. Yeah, they have a nice little bounce and response. It's allowing me to to spread color without having to work very hard and so, it's so when you good. start out with a palette and I paint you usually do some sort of underpainting first right? I, I prefer to only because it'll take me hours to, to load small amounts of a knife only holds but so much paint uh, so I do like to get a little bit of a head start it's kinda like cheating but to be honest most of my paintings are uh, three brushes and a couple of knives and so Although we're doing a, a specific knife painting tonight, I mean, this is very similar to how I actually work regularly, is I just n knock in some values a little bit. And so when Daniel's talking about values, for those of you who are not sure, you have our grayscale yeah, right here. Yeah, I got your grayscale right But we're right talking here. about it. For those of you who are new to this, the lingo, we don't want to scare you off with the, with the technical terms. This is what we call a value scale. So you imagine any painting in black and white, it would be close to these tones. And so... When you're doing a painting, you know, light values or dark values, this is what he's talking about. So he's deciding where his lights and darks are. This is what he's doing. This is ginger translation speak for yes. artists. Like it? Absolutely love it. <laughs> it's, it, it. A question for Daniel. Yes. Does he varnish his paintings when he's done and with what? And does he use a protective coat before the varnish? Okay. When I'm working in acrylics, I do varnish every single painting, and I would love to be the poster child for doing everything right, <laughs> uh, but in all honesty, oh, it is the best practice to put an isolation coat in between your painting uh, and your varnish. And what would and I do it? And what's an isolation? What would an isolation coat would be... Uh, like this, right? Liquitex uh, here. Yeah, like that. here like we go. This. There you go. Liquitex medium and varnish. There you right? go. Gloss, Gloss medium and varnish. Uh, all it is is a cr clear acrylic polymer. Uh, you put a thin clear coat down. Once that's dried and cured, then you're ready for your final varnish. And the reason for that, more than any other, is your clear coat protects the paint that's underneath because varnishes are removable and they're made to be removed the, every so many years um, there's a kind of a rule of nature that says if it's clear it yellows to some degree uh, with sunlight and so uh, the idea is your varnish is there to protect the painting from fingers and from any other uh, you know uh, contaminants uh, pollutants in the air and because your varnish is going to catch it first and protect the rest of the paint. This, when you're removing your varnish, it requires a type of solvent in order to remove a varnish, uh, be it an ammonia base or a solvent like a, like a mineral spirits, uh, depending on your varnish. And so you don't really want to put those things directly on your paint film. So the, the clear coat in between is really the, the optimum way of doing it. And I like to say truthfully that I do it every time, but um, I try to remember to do it uh, as and often you, and, as I remember and you, to and do And he it. normally paints in oils, too. And I do, and, and I paint in oils. Uh, I varnish every single one of my oils uh, as soon as possible. Much, after what period of time? Uh, traditionally, it's six months is the, the standard. There's a company... Uh, 
called Gamblin that makes a product called Gamvar, which I can varnish when it is dry to the touch and cured for a few days and dry wow. to the touch. Uh, and so uh, I am a huge fan because I am I have a little bit of ADHD when it comes to art and when it comes to what I'm doing. Um, and so I really do. I really like these brushes. Uh, sorry, uh, ADD. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really do. Squirrel. 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 Um, sorry, these brushes are like made of squirrel, squirrel. Uh, synthetic squirrel. These are ridiculous. I love them. Um, no, I, I try to make, make sure that every one of my paintings gets varnished uh, properly. Uh, it's it's what protects your paint. How film. do you spell that to varnish for that you use that dries immediately? I mean, G A M V A R. Oh, Gamvar. Have, Gamvar. See, I, I'm glad you had you spell it because, I, you know, people are going to... Because even though we are an acrylic show, occasionally we have a crossover with oil painters and that well, maybe you have a friend that's an oil painter. And, you know, sometimes a gift that you can give another artist is something that they might not have thought of. So if yep. you know a friend that's an oil painter, that might be a fun gift that they would never have considered doing. Because I'm thinking, I'm telling you what, six months to the next day when it's dry... That's a big difference. Oh, absolutely. It is a huge difference. And the uh, the beauty of varnishing a painting is it brings it back to that, that way it looked right when you finished it. And, wow, I'm going to have to get to the knives soon because I am enjoying this brush, and this brush is just kind of... It's mesmerizing? Yes. Thank you, Ginger. This is... Uh, yes. That's all right. So uh, let me have so, the package again in yeah. case anybody's wondering what this was. These are the Art Sherpas. This is their new line These of flat nice. brushes. These are white synthetic. These are Sherpa whites and um, kind of cool, right? So they're yeah. called so, and the, uh, by Silver Brush Company. And um, you get the packages of three in there. So, all right. There's another question in regards to varnishing. When yes. can you varnish golden opens? Golden opens? Once they're cured. Golden Open will be dry generally in a few days. Uh, they'll be touch dry. You want to make sure that you wait until they have dried, and then you apply your clear coat uh, of a gloss medium of some site, uh, of some sort. Uh, and then uh, once that is cured, then you put on your varnish. Now, a neat thing about Gamvar is it's also a synthetic. The majority of the even the so oil acrylic, acrylic paints you could, could use Gamvar too, right? Absolutely. Absolutely, you just want to make sure. Um, it has a little odor, a little bit, not much. Uh, it, it, it's uh, very, very, very weak. Um, whereas a lot of the acrylic-based varnishes... Okay, I've got that. Are we cleaning um, that now? I'm cleaning that one out. I'm going to start, is, all right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna start getting some fine. knife work done. That's the only reason why people want to see me. All right, so we're, 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 he's getting down. So he's had fun with the brush, right? I've had, had a lot of fun with the brush. Thank you, thank you. So he's getting down to the palette painting. Yeah. You guys, is he ever going to talk about? It? But we're learning a lot, you know. And you guys don't understand talking and answering questions about one subject and then painting a painting is a real trick. It's <laughs> it's like chewing gum and 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 jump roping and uh, trying to type at the same time. You know what I mean? It's a uh, it's tricky. It's, it's not always easy, but I do. Because I do a lot of live demonstrations within my job, uh, at the store, and at outside events, it's not hard. So I can answer questions. I just actually have to start looking at what I'm doing. That's all right. That's all right. Um, so you, it shows how much you're painting you're loading on the knife. Very People little. Want to, you're, then I'm starting with very, very little okay. overall. And the reason is I will build my impostos. Um, I will build that thicker paint application and what I'm really trying to do right now more than anything else is you're just uh, using a little bit of yeah. um, uh, Payne's gray a little bit of Payne's gray and I have it loaded right along the edge and oddly I can't see the we're missing the palette to see me load um, can, can, John, are you, John can you see the palette well, I have a choice, a either the palette or the painting. Ah, here we go. Can, can I move go? it? Is yeah. that better? Can That's, you see it now? There we yeah, go. Let's go with that. Yeah, okay. this will work. Uh, now, when palette knife painting, cleaning your knife often is very, 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 very important. Okay. If can not, you're going to mud. Put that in the trash. Ah, thank you. Yeah. 
No, so. uh, you're gonna have to answer some questions as we're going because they okay. keep coming in. No, that's what I'm here uh, for. Daniel needs to start a YouTube channel with oil painting. Several requests have come in for that. All right. Well, as soon he as doesn't I doesn't have anything uh, else to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, since I was last here, uh, we've had a hurricane, and back to school has hit. So I'm dealing with schools, and I'm dealing with uh, uh, all of those wonderful things going on. And I accidentally not only started my own charity fund uh, to help artists that were affected by the storm, my company has started their own as well. It's the the Gerald uh, or Jerry Goldstein Foundation, and through their generous donations, as well as uh, a couple of other local charitable organizations, specifically. Uh, a uh, company called Fresh Arts, which is a, a nonprofit, just put on a show this past weekend that I attended. Um, between all three, we're based on rough numbers. We've probably raised, uh, shoot, well more than thirty, probably closer to fifty thousand so far to to help artists that were affected by the storms. And we're still going. So, if anyone's ever interested in making donations, uh, the Jerry Goldstein Foundation. We translate every single dollar that goes in into Jerry's gift cards uh, for artists that lost everything. So, um, any monies that go to corporate. So, but eventually. To answer the question, yes, I will eventually do an oil painting or two on the internet. But that would be a really, you know, that's where the expression watching paint dry comes from. Uh, <laughs> oil paintings take an awful lot longer to actually do. And I don't have the patience of the man with the, with the afro uh, that we all know and love with his happy little trees. Uh, he used to spend... Uh, weeks doing all of his paintings and doing them 40, 50 times so he had it down to an absolute perfect science every last one um, and so he would do his paintings 40, 50 times so he could do it in an hour exactly just like all the others and I don't have that kind of patience um, Going back to varnishing when yes. you have a highly textured painting Yes. How do you put on your first clear coat before you put on the varnish? And you know, are we talking sprays or are we talking? Oh no. What are we talking? Oh no. I I do it all with a brush. Um, and I actually another one of Cinnamon's that's in one of her kits. She she chose one of my favorite brushes of all time. This is a silver brush. Uh, this is my favorite brush ever. And these are I these use it for are, everything. Yeah, the, what's happening about this is special bore, and the hairs are hand put in and they taper. This is different than mm -hmm. these, you guys. You'd think this was the same, but you see it's not, right? And this is actually tapered. It, th these brushes are pricey. This particular one is expensive because somebody hand put in all these hairs so that, that it comes and it tapers. And, and this is extraordinary. These brushes are just, they're, they're an art. They're made in Japan and they're an art. They're absolutely, absolutely my favorites, and... What's the brand? What's the name of it? I forgot. What it's the... Name. Well, they call it their 1414S. Oh, the old 1414S. Exactly. He's a better title. Catchy, catchy, catchy <laughs> name, yes. Sales, folks up there, you need a better name for that, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, the 1414S really seals the deal. I don't know. That's, that's what sold me. <laughs> that you know, I saw those numbers and I said, I you know, I'm an artist and I'm all about numbers like the rest of us. Because so. you know, artists and math and numbers—that's that's our gig, you know. <laughs> okay, we had another question going back to the gauche. Can yes. Somebody explain what that is and why would I want that over acrylic or how okay. would I use it? All right. Well, gouache uh, has been used by illustrators and designers for a very, very, and artists for a very, very long time. Uh, traditional gouache is really a very, very opaque watercolor. And with the invention of acrylic paint, and with the uh, by adding a little acrylic into the mix, a little bit of that polymer, uh, instead of being always water-soluble, it isn't. And so what you basically get is a very, very saturated, very, very saturated matte acrylic paint. So... Uh, it is, uh, it's great for mixed media application, most of all, uh, is what I've found. 
So people that maybe are into scrapbooking and doing a lot of work with mm -hmm. paper and need to do some certain paper, just you know, maybe they. And also, you know, sometimes when you get acrylic paint out of the tube, it doesn't flow as easily. You got it. Um, you know, I mean, it's a little thicker unless you're using like one of the you know the flow meat flow ones. So something like that, I could see where that could be very handy. And also, Matt it has a. I'll tell you what. If you go to Nordstrom's downtown in Houston and you go mm -hmm. up, to, I think it's like their third floor. It's it's where their offices are, you know, when you go up and ask about your account or something, right? Not that I have one there, but if I had one, that's where I'd go ask. And there's this large painting behind the, the counter. It's been there for years, and it's an oil painting. It's very matte-like, mm -hmm. and it's that's a little bit trickier to get that effect. It's so soft and matte, which you can often get with oil painting. And I would imagine Ghost would do that for you right away. Absolutely, absolutely. And it, and it's 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 designed... You know, back in the days before Photoshop and computers, uh, illustrators were either oil painters, watercolorists, or they had another option. When you wanted something that was opaque, that was still liftable, and easily photographed. Because the matte nature of the, uh, of the paint didn't, uh, didn't shine the way sometimes acrylics, and we all know, when you try and get photos of your work sometimes, if the lighting is too bright, it's difficult to get a clean shot without any, you know, bright spots. And with a very, very matte surface, you're going to get uh, a much better, much better shot. Well, this is interesting. You're really pushing hard on this, and you're yes. holding your nice, very flat, and you're almost like you're trying to scrub it into the background. You got it. And you're letting some of the... Um, I mean, he's pushing hard. I'm watching yeah. him. He's really shoving hard on that knife. Well, you could tell that because he's shaking the whole table. Am I? Mm -hmm. well, it's all right. We don't mind. No. Everybody's well, interested in watching you do it. Because, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to, you know, um, I don't want to That's say that in connotation panel. with cats, but I'm just saying there's a lot of different ways yeah. to do build a better mousetrap, mm -hmm. a lot of different ways to do something, and seeing how other artists do it I think is very interesting. And I and I love having Daniel on our show because he's, just, again, a wealth of information and knowledge on these kinds of things. And incidentally, you know, when you talk about being able to, as an artist, you want to be able to varnish your paintings before you sell them to anybody. Yes. So if you're an oil painter and you've got to wait six months, that's a little hard on your sales. Yes. Or you have to sit, have the, tell the person to bring it back, which is kind of, they've framed it by this time and that's no good. So I could think where this varnish would be very handy. Absolutely. Oops. Here's a, here's a question for you. How does Matisse compare to Golden and Liquitex? Well, how do they compare? Let me count the ways. You know, professionally pigmented saturated paints are professionally pigmented saturated paints. Uh, we all have our preferences. Uh, Matisse happens to be one of my favorites. And for many years, when I was a primary uh, acrylic painter, Golden was my favorite for many, many, many years. And I was introduced to Matisse. And after being introduced to Matisse, I found some of their color formulas were, some of their recipes were delicious. Um, uh, not literally. Uh, I've only tasted it twice, and honestly, it didn't taste very good. Um, <laughs> okay. But uh, between them all, they all feel a little different. Uh, and so sometimes it's just the tactile response, and each one has a place in this world uh, making a beautiful, beautiful product. Um, and you can make a beautiful painting with anything. But the saturation of color and just some of the color formulas between them uh, really, and they should interact just fine with each other. Um, well, just like what you're talking about here. For instance, yeah. this is a color that, you know, um, Matisse blue, what is this one? Mineral blue. Mineral and blue. And, and that's this color right, right here. That's the middle one, right? That's and it's a three-pigment mix that you could probably make it yourself and mix it yourself, but it is so much easier when it's all done perfectly for you. Um, and for those that remember the last time, I do like to mix my colors. Uh, that whole painting was done with uh, three, three colors and a white, so... Uh, I don't always take the easy ones. Well, but this is we got five colors in a white now. I think he's still getting kind of yeah. I'm know, still I'm still on, on that limited. He's, still, he's uh, limited palette. I'm still I'm still somewhat guys, limited. And, and he's he's really squishing that in. There's got a little tiny bit of gel. What would you say about two percent gel? Yeah, in that mixture? if that. Uh, and I'm not doing it for the transparency. This is going to be a much more opaque painting than than the last one. Uh, what I am doing is I am just creating some areas of value and some value changes. 
Um, I, people have asked what it is we are painting this evening. Is what it, is it? Is well, it as soon as you figure it out, spray? let me know. <laughs> Because really? I kind of make this stuff up as I go along. Perfect. Um, it'll come to him as soon as it, it'll come to him, and then you'll see it, right? That's uh, that's what we hope. Yeah. Um, but uh, now, I since the storm, and I don't know if everyone or nearly everyone in the Greater Houston area has a little PTSD, but um, and it's really hard uh, for those that have not experienced, and for those who have, God bless you, it is so difficult, um, watching a city rebuild. Uh, the amount of devastation and disruption of your normal routine, uh, and I'm an artist, I need my routine, I live by some of my routines, and to see my city and my family of artists in this city uh, going through what they're going through, uh, is just it's heartbreaking and it's really hard to keep your mind on things um it does remind you what's important though i can tell you that much um and so uh it's just it's just been difficult so i'm letting my mind uh meander a little bit and, uh, and thank you for uh allowing me the opportunity to just kind of paint it out so to speak um I'm not normally the sensitive sort, but this really got to me, uh, and I've never uh, seen so much uh, in one place at one time. And uh, shoot, the stories of the people pulling—you know—I know an artist that 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 pulled over 200 people out of their homes, uh, carrying them through high water. I mean, who does that? How does that? When does that happen? Um, and that may be something that, if I'm lucky, I'll be able to bring on for the next time. Uh, because I have his, I have his, uh, and he kept track of it on the back of a canvas, with a marker because that was the only thing he could write on. So he kept he kept track of all the people he pulled out of each different building, uh, and carried out to safety. Uh, he kept track of it on it. You know, That's it's just a big guy. Um, he is a pretty big guy, and you know, uh, counting the size of his heart, um, he's he's bigger than all of us. You know, it's uh, uh, so. Uh, you know, John, that's for you, John Whaley, um, one of my heroes now, um, because he didn't ask for me to say his name. He pretty much just shot me a message and showed me a pic. And uh, as soon as it's uh, as soon as that piece is dry, uh, we'll be stretching it the back, stretching it backwards, um, because all of these things were written on the back of one of his canvases, and that was the only thing he had to write on. He lost everything, and those kind of stories have just been getting me. Um, so he was an artist that not only lost his possessions and his home, but, but he went back in for and everybody. Went, and went back in and found other people. Yep. Well, you know, um, my daughter Cinnamon's uh, uh, two younger children are in elementary school there in Humble, and uh, she said the day they um, there's a b very big neighborhood right behind the school, and uh, that had been so badly flooded, no one were no one was allowed back in there until the day school started. They started to let people back in. The very next day when she dropped off her children, you could look back into the neighborhood and it was nothing, block after block of everybody's possessions was out on the front yard mm -hmm. ruined and gone. And so once water's been sitting in your house for a while, you know, you just there's just no fixing it uh, because the mold and stuff and you live in a very wet climate. And this was, you can't, you guys can't imagine that this was neighborhood after neighborhood. It was North Houston, it was South Houston. It was, um, there are some people that won't be back in their homes for months um, so and still, our grocery yeah. stores. Where John went to the grocery store, but you said they were they were still out of stuff. John, oh yeah, the bread, bread is still yep. gone. A lot of the chips are still gone. Vegetables are very short supplied. I mean, most of our produce comes from Texas, and they are all underwater. Yep. Yeah, and let's uh, see. Yeah, it's take total area is roughly the size of the state of Massachusetts. Yeah, was was, 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 destroyed. was what was, was flooded. Destroyed. And, um, and then and uh, and then you know you think about you know that then gas climbed. It went from. It was uh, went up about fifty cents a gallon in some places, and uh, all over the state, gas is short because apparently, you know, our refineries are right down here on the coast, you guys. So when the refineries don't go, nobody has any gas. So who yeah. knows how that's working? And then, of course, the people in Florida, they they were short of gas it. anyway, and now they're trying to, you know, they evacuated so much of Florida. So I mean, the United States has really got hit uh, very heavy this time. Uh oh, uh, we've got uh, the brush out. I got a little bit of a brush out. I'm gonna do a little cheating here. That's not cheating. Uh, this is a this is an this artistic is a, painting. This is a you nice do whatever painting. You want. This and is a, so I'm gonna spread a little bit like of this brush. brush. 
Yeah, I, I wanted an excuse to play with the brush again. All right, you got me, John. Um, but yes, uh, it does help to get a little bit more tone in. I'm starting to get an idea. For those that are really curious as to where the heck I'm going with this, um, I, I've got I, some ideas. Some, some people have said some things, but I'm going to wait and see where you go with it. Okay, yes. All right. So you guys, this is always fun watching Daniel paint. Sometimes if, you know, if it's on a, if it's on a day, you know, it, where the traffic's a little light, Daniel will be demonstrating some stuff in his store, mm -hmm. and you'll can come in and watch him paint. It's very interesting, and you just uh, never know what he's going to do. But he's, you know, he has to be able to. He does oils because he's got to be able to pick it up and maybe help a customer or two or three for several hours, and then he go back for five minutes to paint something and back to a customer. So, um, and then the next day pick up where he left off. Where acrylics really take a little bit to focus. In other words, you kind of are in there in the zone. We talk about being in the zone mm -hmm. when you're painting with acrylics. Um, a lot of people, when we say that, um, you know, they say, what do we mean by that? It's just total focus, right? Yep. Where, um, the where, paint moves itself. paint moves itself. Where the so what, what, what else you got for us, John, as far as questions go? Incidentally, you guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, uh, Ginger Cook Live, Doc Gallery, we're, we're putting a counter out there. We're hoping to get to 50,000 subscribers. Oh, let's see, we, let's see where our counter's at. I, I haven't had that. Uh, Christmas, and, and, you know, we, we were off the air last week, but we did give you paintings. Now, you guys, we put up two awesome lessons last week. We put up one that's a really a must-see, um, insanely easy ways to mix colors in a landscape. If you have not watched that video, that is fantastic. Really, really good for color mixing. And then we did another one of a mountain that was originally done by an artist named Kieran in the late 1800s. He was an American artist. And uh, it was a, a mountains. It was a mountain scene and so forth. If you haven't seen those two videos on our channel, please do. And uh, don't forget to have, throw us a like and a comment after we're over, too. I know it's fun to talk to Daniel, and we'll mm -hmm. answer some more of his questions. But remember, people are not going to see your questions when this is over. The way the live show works is that when someone goes back to look tomorrow, unless we s repeat your question out loud, no one's even going to know what you asked. So if you have any other questions for Daniel, you can sure write us and make sure when he comes back again, he can answer them too. And incidentally, they, someone wants to know where you were lived in the north. That was a question. Where you lived, where you used to Oh, live. I'm originally from Connecticut, but the rest of my family is from New York and New Jersey. Okay. So, and for those that were wondering, yes, Bergen County, New Jersey, we're probably related if that's where you're from. I've got a lot of family out that way. Okay, so, all right, jo jo uh, John, uh, what you got? Well, I'm scrolling. We're talking about gas prices now. People are paying anywhere from, like, two fifty up to $6. I think $6 is overseas, though. Wow. I'm trying to find out where she's at. That sounds awful. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. But, you know, of course, in Houston, you know, we, you know a lot we're of times... We're a little times, spoiled. You know, we're, yeah. Melissa would like to know what is your favorite canvas or surface to paint on? Oh, out of Logan. everything. Out of everything. Everything in the world. What's your go to surface? You know, all right. I have a lot of. <laughs> I have a lot of favorites. Um, I do. I have a lot of things that I love to paint on. Um, if I had to to answer that honestly. And not uh, suppose with lying. What? Of course. Well, you know, <laughs> you know. In overall truth, um, there is a particular linen uh, that I adore more than any other surface. Um, it's called Art Fix, and it's actually the number eighty four C. If anyone you know wants the to give me a Christmas present, <laughs> if, if if anyone wants to get me a, a you know a holiday gift this year, um, just just go ahead and buy it. I'll I'll accept it. Uh, <laughs> I just hope you're worth an awful lot of money because it's it's the most expensive stuff I've ever painted on, but it is it's 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 the, the most. coming a roll. It's coming kind of stretch. Yeah, right? yeah. The roll runs about fourteen hundred dollars. Oh, for that's about really five weird. yards. <laughs> five yards. Yeah, five and a half yards is about fourteen hundred. Uh, and it is worth every single penny for oil uh, or acrylic for or oils for oils for acrylics i wouldn't go there um okay. i wouldn't uh that. yeah no uh but other than that my favorite stretched pre-stretched canvas is paramount pro and i use that more than anything else uh more often and like i was saying before i do love the new aluminum panels and that is becoming rapidly uh one of my favorite things that that happens to exist out there it's it's really 
something that I'm enjoying a great deal. Ooh, that cool. $6 a gallon was in Alaska, and they produced the oil and gas there. <laughs> yeah, but isn't that funny? It's like but everything's more in, expensive in Alaska. It's not that, but when we lived in uh, California, there was, uh, uh, my, when daughter was growing up there, there was a giant tomato field behind us with fresh tomatoes. I mean, there were you know, hundreds of acres of tomatoes, and they tomatoes could only grow in a field for like four years, and then they have to move the field, something happens, and it, it's all the done. Soil. Yeah. yeah, that kills the soil. But we never saw any of those tomatoes in our stores, right? They didn't make it into any roadside stand or any grocery store where we lived. I don't know where those tomatoes went, but we never saw them. It's just interesting how sometimes what you produce in an area the locals never see. So May's asking, so he does yes. not know what he's painting until he puts the paint on the canvas? Generally speaking, that is correct. <laughs> um, every once in a while, I'm blessed with a good idea. Uh, in advance, but no, uh, it starts with the idea of my values. I, I start moving light and dark values around. Uh, I have an idea of what kind of colors I feel like working with, what kind of tones, and from there the image develops. Um, I'm primarily an abstract painter, and I do things that look like things, uh, for examples, to help other painters learn some of the craft that's involved in painting, because Art is also a craft, and uh, that crafting skill of how to apply paint, how to mix colors, uh, it's important whether you're in a, you know, an acrylic painter, an oil painter, uh, watercolorist, whether you're doing complete non-objective abstract, meaning just seemingly random marks with no identifiable uh, reason, uh, versus um, something that is made to look exactly like or more impressionist all of those different styles they, they start as a craft and the art of painting uh, or the craft of painting are, are kind of one and the same the art I always feel like is what's in you the idea you know what's what part of it is yours uh, what part of you is in your painting and so some lessons are more of a craft lesson learning how to manipulate the paints um, that's one of the things about uh, painting through replication of existing paintings, it's why it's so effective is because you're learning the craft. You know, you're not, you're not learning how to necessarily uh, create art. You're learning how to have the right tools so that you can take the art that's in you and represent it properly. Yeah, Would you say yeah, that's, that's correct? A, that, yeah, because um, you can't, you know, in other words, it, um, that the actual art of painting something, for instance, you know, if you're looking at a painting and, and replicating it, you know, that's that's a skill, like learning a language, like French or English or Italian, mm -hmm. I always say that. But a good idea is something that, that nobody can, that only can come from you. But if you have a good idea, but you don't have the tools in your, in your craft ability to make the good idea, then, you know, people are always full of good ideas. And as artists, we know that. Yeah. You should paint, don't you? They start off, that is so nice. You, <laughs> you should, should paint. paint a the, <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. And my aunt would just love that. Hey, have you ever thought of painting this? Well, they thought about painting it. Obviously, Why that's something they Why don't you do they it? Want. But they, they don't have the craft yet. But right. one of the reasons that we put these shows on and show this, you know, one, the whole idea behind our art academy is we take mm -hmm. people from the very simplest lessons and they come with, you know, instruction. People can send me their artwork and I'll add some suggestions on how they can improve oh, it. Oh, mm -hmm. rat, we're buffering now. Uh-oh, this is not good, John. Well, we got into an hour. Okay. I'm going to try to really get into it. an hour. Jeez. All right. So did we kind of lose? I was I was on a roll here. With yeah, yeah you were. To join our art academy. Yeah. Well, we've got it. Should be on the recording. Now the problem is when we cut, you have a couple more questions. Well, we tell can... us ahead of time so we can be answering them. We're going to ask it again. Um, you how do you prepare? Them? How do you prepare watercolor paper for acrylic? And we'll be back in a second. The feed is back up. I'm waiting for Sammy's um, computer to kick in. I see Ginger is still frozen over there. Frozen, frozen, waving a hand. <laughs> All right, well, this happens, you know. I mean, um, we get the, we, we're at the mercy of the elements with these live streamings. But we like them. We like doing them. Yes. It says we are back, but nobody's seen it yet. Okay. Anyone seen us? It's too bad I didn't do a painting before that looked totally different and just like flip it and start painting on it. 
Oh, that would, that, time, would, freak every, yeah, that would freak time. everybody out. Yeah. Ah. Oh, sorry, you missed us for Okay, seven we're minutes. back. Uh, here we are. All right, let's go back to the questions while you're still All right. doing that. Um, what came first? Oh, we have this. Okay, first was, how do, you do, how do you prepare a watercolor paper for acrylic? Preparing a watercolor paper for acrylic is pretty easy. Uh, my personal recommendation uh, is... Little bit of gesso on both front and back. Oh, it will stiffen it. Uh, acrylic paint shrinks as it dries and it creates a tension, which is what buckles paper. Yeah, and so if you put tension on both sides, Good. that is uh, that'll help to keep it from curling as much. So, you're talking about gesso now. Yeah, the Liquitex guy said that if you put the gloss medium and varnish on the paper, you can do the same and then do the same thing, and that dries a little quicker than gesso, right? It does, it does, and it is a little bit more transparent, as in all completely more transparent. <laughs> um, so a lot more than a little. Uh, it's personally, not, not as stiff, is it? It's, it's not quite as stiff, and I do like the uh, absorbency of gesso, oh, um, that's and that's one of the advantages to using gesso versus any other product is um, all of that powdered uh, not only pigment but also uh, the calcium carbonate that's in there uh, makes it a much more absorbent surface so um, but that's a personal preference I've but, used but we both. want your personal preference yeah we want, no we want I've used both um, and again depending on the type of work I'm doing would make a whatever the piece is be made of and what are people making it these days out of and do we even know well traditional gesso was italian for gypsum and basically it was crushed gypsum uh or limestone uh you know powdered up mixed with a, almost like an egg tempera and oil um and so uh the white came from the the gypsum or the chalk uh calcium carbonate uh, that was in it uh it was bound with rabbit skin glue and a little bit of oil and so uh, that was your traditional sizing and grounds um, now it's an acrylic based product um, so it's basically an acrylic emulsion with uh, one of those powdered elements uh, and then uh, they add titanium white and so it's just a densely opaque very matte and chalky acrylic paint okay all right speaking of gesso yes should i gesso a linen canvas stretch that is triple primed with acid-free acrylic primer or would that defeat the purpose of a smooth surface? Well, that is a personal preference. I'd say that's a little overkill. Um, only because it's already been triple primed with gesso. So, uh, but if you are unhappy with the surface, would like it to be more absorbent or you can make it smoother, um, I've been known to, when I want to smooth it out and have extra absorbency, put three, four, five extra layers of gesso and sanding in between with a really fine grit. And um, what I'll get is a very stacked surface and very, very, very... Um, Almost painting like on your aluminum. Yeah. I mean, it's super smooth and super absorbent. And if I'm going to do oils on it on an acrylic prime... Uh, I would like it to be as absorbent as possible for my early layers. It actually uh, ha helps to speed uh, the drying times a little bit. And um, that is something that, uh, with a, as an oil painter and also having a little bit of ADD, I really do enjoy uh, finding ways to make my oils <laughs> dry a little faster. Um, Okay, so so we've got people that are watching that yes. maybe English is their second language. So when you refer to ADHD, it's okay, <laughs> attention deficit disorder. hyperactivity disorder. Um, it basically means uh, I'm like a dog in a room full of squirrels all the time. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and for anyone that is actually diagnosed with that, I'm just teasing. Sorry, I hope I don't offend anybody. But I, I really do have a lot of uh, problems with attention span uh, when it comes to when I'm working. Uh, I like when my ideas flow. I need my paint to flow. I need things to dry when I need them to dry. I need things to stay wet when I need them to stay wet. And learning to manipulate your materials uh, is a lifelong quest that I have. Um, trying to figure out how to get exactly the most out of what it is that I'm working with. Um, because every material, I don't care what paint, what surface, 
they all have limitations and learning to work within those limitations and push them beyond their limitations as far as you can is, is kind of one of my goals. Cheryl would like to know, what can I seal my alcohol ink painting with? Glass. Just put it on um, glass. You know, you probably could. Um, I have very limited experience with alcohol inks. They usually were the precursor to the rest of my acrylics. And so uh, they tend to stay pretty well. So you could probably use a spray uh, spray coat, uh, but I'd, I'd always be a little bit worried about the, the solvent content into one of the spray clear coats that are acrylic based. Um, so if you were careful enough, left a good distance, it may do okay. Uh, beyond that, put it under glass. It'll, it'll, it'll pop the colors and you're guaranteed to protect it. Sounds good and to and me. also, you know, I would suggest too, you know, that um, if you're going to do anything like that with something you're not sure about, take a test piece of paper, to scribble on it with some color, let it dry, and see what happens before you wreck your painting. Exactly. You know, I'm just saying, you know, you can test all kinds of things, and maybe you'll come up with a new way and tell us. But, um, you know, but but you know, you've got a lot of time and hours in your artwork, and you know. Um, Wrecking it with varnish, you know. Yeah. You know our good friend. Um, I think I'll throw a name and put her name on here too. You know, we got a good friend took some lessons from me, and uh, for, you know, paint, painting. And um, you know, the thing about Liquitex is all their stuff looks the same. All their little bottles of stuff. See, this is they all look the same. I don't know if I can show you. Mm -hmm. They all look the same. I don't care what you're buying. They all look the same. Um, they're they, their little jars look the same, so it's easy to grab the wrong thing if you don't have your glasses on, particularly when you're a little older, and you have to, you have, to have glasses to see what you're doing. And so and she went to varnish a painting, and she grabbed the gesso first <gasps> instead of the, it was a giant painting, big one, like 40 by 40, mm. and she'd spent months on it, and um, she painted it white overnight and called me up the next day, and I said, uh, she said, what should I do? And I said, uh, Start again. Get to work. Get, get, get to, to work. work. You've oh. covered your painting. So you know, it never hurts to, uh, you know, read the labels. In fact, I, I did that the other day on something. I was doing a suitcase, mm -hmm. and I thought I was grabbing varnish, and I luckily grabbed um, a glazing medium and didn't ruin it. But I painted the whole thing thinking I was using varnish, I was using glazing medium. Oh. I, didn't I didn't even yep. follow my, didn't even practice what I preach here. It's just too easy to do. You know, you think, oh, I know what this stuff is, and you don't. Get, it, get your... Read it. Oh, this Absolutely. is nice. I like in what you're putting um, here. While we've still got a good feed, can you point to each of the colors and tell what they are again, please? Sure. On the palette. On the palette. Well. Payne's gray. <laughs> Let's move this over. Payne's gray. Mineral blue. Phthalo blue. That one is the Naples yellow light. That is antique white. And that is titanium. Notice I haven't touched this one yet. Uh, we're going to see where my values end up. This is kind of, in case of emergency, break glass, use your white. Uh, I try and keep most of my values... Uh, I try and save white for towards the end. I use in my mixes, and again, this is one of those things that... Um, white is sometimes the most useful color in your palette, and other times... Uh, it actually changes your colors and reduces the chromatic value or the or the, the the density of that color and I'm not very good personally with some of my color values that's one of the you know we all have things that we see easily and that we're very good at um, we're naturally inclined towards certain things and for me seeing color value black and white and grayscale easy for me, when working within a limited color palette, sometimes I don't see all the subtle nuances uh, as well as maybe I should. And so by adding too much white too early, I tend to paint my whole painting way brighter than I would like it to be, if that makes sense. Sure it does. And yep. so I, I bring it in towards the end as kind of like the icing on the cake, um, as opposed to early on in my mixes. Now, other painters see those color values immediately, and so... Um, there's never any, you know, truly wrong way of uh, of approaching a painting, but I try and go from dark to light, and if you'll notice, I'm bringing some darker values in because I didn't quite put as many dark values as I would like, even though there's a lot of it. As I get to see it on this monitor, I got a monitor over here, uh, so I'm a little farther away, and 
that's just brilliant. I need to have one of these in the studio. I know. Like a that monitor great? that just shows things from far away on a big screen. I would love it. Um, well, otherwise, you're backing keeps, up. Well, backing yeah, up. it keeps me from walking away all the time and looking back, uh, looking at a distance. But essentially, I've got some good deep values, good deep values, and I'm a little bit lighter in those deep values down here, so I'm going to have to bring some of that in. So and, here's and his grayscale. So this yeah. was a black and white painting. So he's got yep. these dark values up here. Right? Yep. Up here, and then he's got some of these middle tones. Yep. And then a few of the light tones. Not, not yep. too many yet. Not he's too many few, yet, but the, light tones. the idea is I would ideally like to have a change in value nearly every inch of this painting. And nearly every inch of every painting, uh, that little subtle, whether it's, whether it's a strong value change, like an obvious white versus black, um, or just a slight change. Slight changes uh, help. That's kind of the, the rhythm of your painting, uh, the gentle rhythm that's not very obvious, but that's one of the things that help to keep them interesting. So it is something that uh, learning to do those values in and, and getting that little tempo in there, it's helpful. And you'll notice a very big difference if you paint... Uh, the majority of your paint colors are actually out of the tube four, five, and six, maybe a seven. So in this area, most colors out of the tube fall in those scales between your reds, your blues, uh, your yellows, uh, even your oranges, and most of your violets will fall anywhere on the grayscale within those four. So Which makes a pretty dull, paint, uninteresting painting. Exactly. Even though the colors are very different, they generally, in grayscale, fall right around there. If you're so, taking a black and white photograph of what type of yep. you take, and you've got everybody's got a cell phone now, practically, yep. and you've got a, it's easy enough to switch it to. If you don't know how, ask somebody. Ask some kid on the street; they'll show you, and, and be amazed you don't know how to do it. But they'll huh. show you how to take a photograph and, in a second, turn it into a black and white photo. And if you'll do that often, the other thing I suggest to people is that we have a monitor in front where we'll be able to see our stuff. And he and I, yeah. I rely on that so much. But if you don't have that, you go to Walmart or you know at Oshams or someplace where you, where we live, buy a ten dollar cheap mirror, like a full mm -hmm. length mirror, maybe ten bucks. Doesn't have to be great. And set it behind you. So what you do is then you turn around and you see your picture, and you can take a you can take a brush on your picture, like you know you kind of you point here and then you point there, and you kind of see if you're in the you see the spot that you need or you can do something like this with the brush and there's a mirror behind you and that's a really good way to uh, just just reverse the image that will help your mind a lot by the way that's it it's just everyone should have a mirror behind them if they don't have a monitor uh, another question surely do the manufacturers of paint colors associate their colors with Panatone color mixes generally no generally no um, that's reserved mostly for your interior house paints and things like that. Um, these are artist paints and they are very, very, very different. Uh, you're not supposed to mix house paint. That's what the people at the store do. Um, whereas, now it may be something that the manufacturers may be able to provide for you, but they don't pre-formulate their colors based on that. Um, they would pre-formulate based on what can you mix with this and what, you know, what does this allow an artist to do? I'm loving this. Almost the a, medium. A, the medium, all right. So yep. it's getting the medium to make it look almost, it almost has a purple feel to it. Yep. Now, normally, and Payne's Gray is ultramarine blue and black, right? Yep. And basically, and that's exactly what it is, but when popped versus such a greenish tone, it actually creates the illusion of a violet. It does feel. Yeah. It does look yeah. like a violet, but though it's not, right? Right. Correct. It's absolutely. It's blue plus black equals so. this color, and that's not what you should get generally um, when you mix a blue and a black. But the uh, now is that this? But is it Matisse, is a reddish black. This is Matisse's Payne's gray. Yep. So could we expect that with say a golden Payne's gray or Liquitex? You will see slight variance between everybody depending on what colors they formulated and how much of each so uh, it's, it's it's you know it's, it's kind a of, recipe it's a recipe man Coke versus this is Pepsi. what cinnamon ran into she was right. telling me just today was 
that there were so many different colors of Naples yellow and Naples yep. yellow that, you know, it just... You grabbed the wrong one, you got the wrong color in your and, recipe. And then here's the thing, you guys. You guys aren't thinking about this, but everybody's monitor is showing the color slightly different as your camera. So the colors you're seeing, maybe not even the colors we mixed. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Because depending on your monitor... Um, on your computer so while uh, video is a great thing and John goes to great lengths to color balance our stuff I think we have the I really think we have the best technology available when it comes to being able to duplicate the colors as close as we can you may have a hundred dollar monitor that isn't showing it or you're watching this on your cell phone it's going to compress it a lot it's going to look slightly different than if you were watching it on your television because you know you can watch you guys you can watch these videos on your TV too with the aid of how do they do that John? Uh, what? How do they watch the videos on the TV? Uh, well, they can go through their iPad. They can. Some of the smart TVs now have a built-in web browser, and they have YouTube offered. So it's going direct now. A lot of them. Really? Yeah, technology is great. Yes, it is. Hey, oh. what is metallic white any different than titanium white? Yes. Okay, I think that's all we need to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, well, titanium is actually a metallic white. But when they're when they're talking about a metallic white, there's usually some form of mica added that'll give it the appearance uh, and the extra sparkle of a metallic. And so, it's not something you'd normally paint with. I've never bought a metallic white in my life. You know, the illusion of creating the look of uh, metallics is made through different temperatures of gray and white. Uh, so basically, uh, if you if you warm and cool your grays with the different tones of the surrounding things, it'll look much like the old masters. You always look like you were looking at a silver dish or a pewter dish. You could tell what kind of metal they were representing. Um, they didn't have any metallic pigments that they were working with. Uh, it was all a series of illusions and color mixes and associations of color and their values. Um, and they trick your brain into thinking you're seeing something that you're not actually seeing. Um, now, we have metallic paints, and <laughs> and so they're actual using. Usually, it's a mixture of uh, uh, a lot of mica chips along with, which are very reflective, and they do give that sparkle of a, of a metal uh, along with uh, the different uh, pigments that they use to to create the whole luster of it all. So, another okay, question you. is: How do you keep your knife paintings from becoming so muddy? Well. Because um, you're painting wet on wet. I'm painting wet on wet, but thankfully this is an acrylic painting, so um, most of this stuff is dry. So uh, one of the reasons why I like to smash my, uh, my knife into the painting, and um, if I was using a tremendous amount of this gel, uh, which I picked the high solid gel specifically because it dries a little faster than some of the other gels. Uh, yes. Um, why that is, I'm not sure, and you know, it's a good question for Golden, but I've found that it dries uh, relatively... So, so it's Golden is supposed to say Liquitex. This Golden is yeah. the one that's... This is so the one that, that I that, that I that use you, when I'm doing a... Because uh, it dries a little quicker. Now, that's yeah. an interesting tip. Put, put, put it forward. Slide it forward. There that's you go. That's interesting. Yeah. Golden, golden solid, high solid gel seems to... Daniel says dries faster than the other brands. Yep. And you want that? It's not the high gloss. It's just the high solid gel. I yeah. guess it is gloss. Well, gloss, yeah, gloss, and they they make it in matte and in satin. Uh, and honestly, if I had had the satin in stock today, uh, you would have brought that. I would have brought that one because the satin is my favorite. I, li I do like the gloss, uh, but I do prefer the satin finish on the high solid gel. Um, no. It just has a, an interesting luster to it. Looking at your palette, that's the little white blobs up next by the blue. This right here? Yeah. No, that, that's that. Yeah, that's yeah. The, that's, the, that's the that's the the high solid gel. Okay. That's actually a transparent. Yeah. And this is what I'm saying is that the the gels look white, the uh, varnishes look white when you put them on, yep. and that's why it's easy enough to, to mistake gesso for something like that, and then you've got a real problem. Yes. Now you I can see you've gone into the phthalo blue a little bit. Yes. So you're going to play with that. Going to play with a little bit of phthalo. And he's going to add a little bit of this uh, light yellow color to it. So it's going to turn it a little bit turquoisey. Yes. I love some of these subtle mixes, and, and these are weird colors, and these are not your normal standard everyday mixes. Um, and I do find, and I'll pick up some of the mud from over here and get that in there, and that'll dull down my color. One of the tricks 
to, to doing improvisational painting like I do is you got to know what your colors are going to do when they're mixed together. And I can't make a bad color with these. And if I accidentally pick up the wrong color, uh, it doesn't bother me because it's not really going to have a bad effect uh, because I'm, I'm fairly well aware of everything that's going to go in uh, and where everything is. Um, so even when I pick up a little Payne's Gray into a mix that I was going to go with this kind of color, um, and I can bring a little bit of this in. And now that's your Naples this, yellow light? Yeah, this is my Naples light, and there's a lot of yellow in that, and so this is going to really green this up. And I was really looking forward to that. But if again, if I pick up a little of this gray in there, it's going to mix and it's just going to dim down and it's going to neutralize a little bit. So oh, it takes yeah. just a little bit. And so I am a firm believer that all the colors in your mixes should go everywhere. Um, and I never understood that, the all color everywhere mantra until... I started really playing with mixing a lot of color and realized a little bit in each of the little spots helps to unify your painting and it helps to make sense of some of the color that you decide to work with. And oh, that's nice. I'm liking that. And it's, it's coming along. Um, and I should just wrap this up soon. So give that's me just right. a minute. You're fine. You're just fine. We're, we still have a thing, you guys, where um, um, we... Uh, want to thank you for the painting that you gave us the last time it went to um, our scholarship fund we sold it at our auction and it went to the scholarship fund and uh, several artists are now taking lessons at gingerclub.gallery ah, because of your that's donation awesome. so we thank you very much so, and people, uh, there was a lot of um, interest in your last painting and people really fought over it to get it <laughs> and, um, which is always fun which well, is next fun time too. I'd like to see video of that fight <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, of course, it's a you know. I guess we could put a camera on the on the auction site, and you can watch people. You know, in the, you know, one person you know bids, and someone else bids, and mm. that kind of thing. That's that. Or maybe next time we can do it with knives. Yeah, I, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm in a. Uh, I'm almost finished. That's all right. Can you um, mix the gauche? How do you say it? Gouache. Gouache. Can you mix the gouache with acrylics? Yes. You can. And why would I want to do that? Well, it's an acrylic paint. It just happens to be a very matte and densely pigmented acrylic paint. So um, if you uh, are just looking for a specific color that's available in the gouache, or if you want to do it as a top coat, or do it underneath, uh, or mix them together, I mean, it's it's a fully functioning acrylic paint. It price just, wise, how does it compare to acrylics as far as there are uh, other acrylics? Price wise? They're in the higher end because again they are very 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 saturated they have very, a lot of pigments you're paying for very pigment. saturated you're paying for pigment and it is a, more of a specialty product but it is you're going to love it well I'm excited to, you know, to get the gift I have to say we're always excited and it's interesting to see what you're doing here oh okay do we know what it is yet well yeah, anyone's guess yet. is as good as mine it's just, uh, you know, it's, yeah. we'll, just see what, we'll just see where we're going here with that. Well, I mean, I think that's kind of interesting. Again, I want to invite everybody who's been hanging in there watching Daniel Paint to uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, Daniel has agreed to be a, a monthly guest artist with us. and We're, uh, we're going to be doing some stuff with him, probably possibly whatever we can. Every month, if possible, he's going to show up, and we'll let you guys know plenty of time. We originally thought it would be fun to um, do it on the first Monday of every month, but... Um, we can't always we can't always uh, coordinate our schedules, so just look for our Facebook post. It's ginger cook ninety two on Facebook. That's my Facebook page. Eventually, I'm going to get an official Facebook page. Um, I just don't have time to fool with all that stuff. But anyway, <laughs> we, we post these notices, and also if you haven't signed up, go to our website gingercooklive.gallery and sign up for our newsletter. Um, we try to you know we might send out a newsletter to everybody if you guys are interested. Just a quick news. Like a quick, you know, instant email flash saying, guess what, Daniel will be a guest on our show uh, at such and such a time. Be sure to catch it. You know, so you want or, to or, or sign up for the form because the form I doesn't go to. out immediately. Oh, sure. I was going to do almost 100% knife painting, but I have to try one of these, so forgive me. 
I have to finish. But this with is this. A, these are the new Art Sherpa uh, brushes. These are the, which I've been the, dying to try. The, the uh, Sherpa white brushes that Cinnamon had designed, and and these are again we're talking about the Ferrari of paint brushes. These are fantastic, and they're just specifically designed for acrylic paint, and um, which is kind of you know which we love. Um, and we're so glad to have him. And, and he's got his on order at J yep. Jerry's. But they're, currently, there's an ad on Jerry's on their website for Cinnamon right now. And they've got a, there's, they're available on the official uh, mm -hmm. Jerry's Artorama website. They exist also, in the warehouse. Also, also with the, our friends, the brush guys, and, um, in the, uh, you know, also have them. So, and Daniel will be having his pretty soon. They're on order. These have been very popular. They're selling out as fast as they get them in because people have discovered... And I'm not saying this because I'm telling you, I'm not saying this. This is my daughter. I mean, I these will tell you about nice any. Brushes. These are great brushes. I would tell you, excited about any product that I, I tell you that I think is great. I tell you about it, and um, and I tell you about things I don't like too, right? But, you know, mm -hmm. you, hear, you hear about these things, uh, which is good. You know, we want to tell you about. Can you uh, bring out that gouache set again and show it and the name of it and I would should be happy product to do number it. of it and yeah. Turner acrylic. Gouache. That one is the. I can't remember which set that one is. Where'd it go? It's right there on the ground. Is it? It's back oh, yeah, box. there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where'd it go? Mm. Uh, the ginger difference. All right, I see it. Haha. -ha. So, you guys, so this is called uh, the a smart, smart set? Yep. This is the smart set. The acrylic, uh, acrylic gouache by Turner. And it is unbelievably wonderful. And what's cool is that it has a it has a box that comes with it. Can I show you this for yeah. a second? We're gonna move your painting out of the way. We're gonna sorry. <laughs> oh, sure. sure, let's just move this Here, out just of the way. Let me just yeah, we, you wanted to see it, right? Because this is cool, right? Now the, the lid opens as a palette. And there's actually something called palette cleaner. I've never heard of that, but that's so sort of cool. And you get all these colors. You get um, a, even a color little, look at this, this isn't this cute, this is a color mixing um, chart. Chart. How adorable is that? All right, <laughs> just like these little things, came with some brushes, a couple things of white, all these colors. Nifty, nifty, nifty for travel. Like that, and this clicks like that, honestly. So, there you go, you guys. That is called, and, we, and they've got them on sale right now at, at uh, Daniel's store. Mm -hmm. um, and they should be on sale at my store. They should be on sale online. Uh, we love this product. We absolutely adore their products. And Big it's fan. a Turner Acrylic Gauche. And here I want to show you this. The back of it comes with instructions. Yep. So if you're not that sure alone is how to the use price. Acrylic Gauche, what is Acrylic Gauche, comes with the, it's called the Smart Set. This is adorable. We thank you. Normally these are over $100, and they've got them on sale right now for 30 at Jerry's. There, slide the, slide the painting. Slide the painting back up. Oh, there we go. Up. Like this? Thank you. Does that work? Yeah. That works. Okay. All right. Cool. So you've got the brushes and you've got your palette knife and your. Ooh, that's a little bit. Okay. That's not the right color. All right. All right. You saw it here first. I did not get the color I was looking for. And by the way, it's a lot easier to remove when you're doing with oils. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> but that's okay. That's one of the reasons why I like oils, is it allows me to screw up at leisure. That's what I say about acrylics. We just have different... You know, we, just paint over. we just paint over. We just paint over. Acrylics you paint over with oils you... Um, other than what is it? <laughs> yeah, other than that. Uh, cinnamon, you know, uh, you know, it's come up. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are adding... You know, they're doing, they're doing, they're pouring acrylics and then they're adding oils and um, weird, you know, weird stuff yes. into the paints and, 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 and I so don't know. forth. I have yet to figure out if any of that is safe for you, whether or not it is safe for, uh, like, the silicone, I don't know. I'm still waiting on confirmation on whether or not that's going to destroy the paint film or not. Um, when in doubt, call Golden. They've got a number on the back of their... Uh, Usually they have a phone number. They have a phone yeah. number here on the back, and you can just go to their website and shoot them an email to one of their technicians. They should be able to answer that question for you. When you get down to answers of chemistry, um, it's always worth asking the professionals. Uh, I'm a professional painter, but I am not a chemist. 
by any stretch. And when it comes to the archival nature of certain uh, currently uh, flavor of the day kind of uh, techniques, generally speaking, if it's an additive you buy at the hardware store for your paints, it's not always the best idea. That's my take on it, uh, but I would much rather take that information truly from someone who knows what they're talking about. And let me just finish this thing up. Yeah, go ahead and finish it up. Have fun with this. Yeah. You know, have fun with us. We're enjoying talking. So while he's finishing up, you're watching him finish this up, I want to encourage everybody to catch our show tomorrow night. Um, We've got some great paintings. You know, tomorrow night we're going to go live with something. Let's see, what did I say we were going live with? It's coming back to me. I'll find something here. What was the painting? Oh, yeah. We're going to be doing, um, this is a light and love, you guys. We're going to be doing this tomorrow night on uh, flowers on a branch. Okay, tomorrow night we're going to be playing, painting these blossoms on a branch tomorrow night. 8 by 10 canvas. That should be fun. I hope you enjoy doing that. And uh, we look forward to having you there. Be sure to share these, you know, videos and let people know what we're doing because you're always going to learn something new on this channel. We try to keep you um, entertained and, and um, to the, so that you really can get a vast knowledge of painting with acrylics. So the one thing I've always said when I've taught people to paint is I don't try to teach you to paint like me. I try to teach you to paint like you. And uh, not all styles are good for everybody, but d during this... Uh, you know, these are rows of different kinds of paintings we do. You're going to find things that you really love to paint that resonate with you. And when that does, you've really got, um, oh, that's looking good. So you really, you, you know, then you start getting your own, your own stick, like w what Daniel talks about. And you start finding your inner voice, your inner artist, and want to paint with that, which is kind of cool. Well, we appreciate do that Do the very much. Uh, gouache dry as fast as regular acrylics? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's funny when you mentioned gouache. I had a friend um, who, who sold a lot of uh, prints on canvas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes what, what artists will do is, so, you know, besides numbering it, they have the, what they call an artist proof. They use mm -hmm. the first five uh, canvases that they print out. The prints are what they call an artist proof. And then they'll take some paint and they'll add a little bit of actual paint to the canvas where the artist has physically touched the canvas somewhere, painted something, and they preferred gauche to acrylic. Mm -hmm. And I, it was interesting that they like to use the gauche for that. Yeah, well, the reason is it's very opaque, but it's very, um, it's, again, it's easy to work with, and traditional designers' gouaches, um, what they'll do, what that does is basically, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a matte, opaque watercolor. And so, if it really screws up, you can lift it with water. And the acrylic version of the same product doesn't actually lift quite as easily. Um, but, it, again, if you can... It's basically an acrylic paint that you're encouraged to thin with more water because it is so densely pigmented, and it's made to dry matte anyway, so you're not dealing with lo the loss of your gloss uh, or strength of your paint film. Uh, it's less of a concern. And so it kind of allows you some freedoms in there. Oh, and I like okay. the fact that you can just make such cool changes uh, and draw on it and mark it up and do all sorts of fun stuff here. Cool. All right. Well, that's a good thing. You know, I just, it was interesting, to, you know, to know that they, yeah. that they, you know, that people do it for that, use it for that too. And, and for those of you who English is a second language, when you're talking about opaque, it means you can't see through it. That, I just feel like the translation sometimes. Mm. I know I was trying to speak go in another country and I've got a lot of I've got a lot of words but I don't have all the words, you know right. what I mean? So I figured I might just An artist's know. vocabulary is uh, mm -hmm. it's a hard thing to to learn and do and I do sometimes forget and I apologize. No no uh, no don't I'm just I'm just that's why I'm here. Yeah. Just that I'm thinking about it now. You're thinking about painting you know, and and doing all your fun stuff with the paintings. And uh, so don't you love how stiff that brush is? Oh my lord, yes. It doesn't just, and you get this nice, you get this wonderful edge, don't you? I mean, yep, it's just that is that holding edge. a wonderful edge for me, and that's going to help me make a few little marks in here. Yeah, it's and, an awesome edge. Oh, look at that! Yeah. And just see, and 
And I know Daniel normally paints on an easel too, so we're asking him to paint on a flat surface. And if you haven't painted on, painted on a flat surface for a while, it is not. It, 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 once you're used to an easel, it's tough to go back to a flat surface. We've just found it's easier for us to film this way. Yeah. And, um, and it's, could, a, it's, a, it's an interesting difference. Uh, I'm not used, usually this close to my paintings yeah. while I'm working on them, so. Um, and it does help you can see in the, you know, he's got this video thing you can see in the mirror here where he's, uh, well, almost like a mirror. This camera's showing up. We have a TV screen right in front of us. And um, so he, he can see what he's painting, which is helpful, because when you're this close, you really can't tell what you're painting. you got to get to get back to that, right? You got it. You know, you got to yeah. get back away from your yeah, artwork yeah. And, and look and really mm -hmm. see it. And if you're not doing that at home, standing back or even showing it to a mirror or something, get in the habit of doing that. Um, take a little bit more of this, get my last couple of mixes in here, and be done. Okay. Uh, somebody went online and they found a set that shows eighty-one dollars. Is there a special code, or is there a special? Is there more than one it, set? It, well, they're on sale at the store for about thirty dollars, but that's the regular price. So unless uh, something just changed, that's the, the about third. I want to say it's about thirty-five dollars right now, uh, but that's that's the store price. We are different businesses, so. Um, I'd say give me a call. We'll uh, at the store and, and we'll work something out. There cool. you go. That's good, right? Well, you, you know, and I, I'll tell you what. They, they, they Jer Daniel's running a business too, and his store was closed for a week. And a week in an art store is is, um, is like the kiss of death. You know, yes, it is. They never close except for two holidays a year: Christmas and what else? Uh, Christmas and New Year's. And New Year's, the only two days a year that they close. Oh, Thanksgiving. No, excuse me. We're open on New Year's. No, it's Christmas Christmas and Thanksgiving. All right. So if you think about that, you know, that they don't close. Having their, their art store was closed for over a week mm -hmm. because it wasn't that the store was damaged, but the freeways were flooded. Could you imagine all the freeways were underwater and nobody could get anywhere? I mean, literally nobody could get around anywhere. And, um, um, you know, this kind of thing. And... So, again, uh, John and I um, were very grateful because our house did not flood, but we, we, you know, we were kind of homebound. So was my daughter Cinnamon, and homebound because um, everything around us was flooded and, and um, lots of people out of work. So not to be, you know, a horse too badly on this stuff because I know Florida's going through it now, and it's just, it's, um, it's a challenge. So anyway, we, we don't mind... You know, Jerry says, you know, I, I taught lessons there for years back when they had the store up on this end of the mm -hmm. world and they had a little more room and taught classes from years. I'm familiar with Daniel and I have known each other for a long time. And um, I'll tell you that we've gotten, um, a, you know, I know the products and I know the store and, you know, we're, we want to remind everybody that Jerry's is back in business. And come, Thank you, Ginger. Come, come see him. Um, you, does Jerry ship to Alaska? I think I've had issues before. That's from Holly. She's you know, up in Alaska. Uh, Holly, let me make sure, but I, I believe we do ship everywhere in the country. Um, and that is, uh, it, Would I don't you think ship to Holly? I will ship to Holly. There you go. Daniel says so, he'll ship to you. So call me, call me tomorrow, Holly. I'll be there for a few hours. I'm taking a half day tomorrow. You deserve it. Well, you know, one of my employees uh, has been unable to uh, come to work due to uh, dealing with the flood. And so since the flood, she's, she hasn't been able to work, so I've picked up all of her shifts for her. Mm. Wow. Because I'm on salary, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So. But she's not. No, she is not. So uh, basically I come in and clock in as her. Man, that is nice. What a nice boss. Wouldn't you love your boss to do that for you? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, John. Can't do it for you. <laughs> Drat. <laughs> can't can't do, do, do okay. that for you. All right. Last of it. Last of it. Okay. Last of it. Last of it. Last of it. Just here. Yeah, it's all right. Don't, don't panic. Yeah, yeah. We're having fun. I mean, aren't we having fun, you guys? You're I hope everyone's having fun. fun. We're enjoying the live stream. It's it's fun to, you know, um, it, you know, watch the layers of paint that got built up on this, and we still see um, some of this light gray area. This is um, some of your lighter colors mm -hmm. from the canvas. It's and really nice. I like that. And you know, let me just see what else. I'll just do my my favorite scrape. 
Oh, is it? Bit. The, uh, I'm going to do my scrapes. It's scrapes. Okay, so right. talk to us when you do your scrapes. Jury right. line scrapes. shifts only to the lower 48. Well, oh. I'll see what the... I have no idea how much it costs to ship to Alaska. It won't be free, I can promise you, sadly. Uh, but, but you'll do it? Uh, we'll make sure that it's available in my system. Uh, we work with UPS, so assuming that they go ahead and do... Um, I assume UPS ships there. Uh, but we'll talk. Uh, call me or shoot me an email, houston at Uh and we'll figure... We'll, we'll figure out, out what we can, how we can do it. I know that the folks in Canada have a terrible time getting yeah. anything. They cannot get anything. Yeah. But uh, yeah. you know they're having trouble. But I will say this because can Canada is so expensive. But our friends over there at thebrushguys.com, they will ship to Canada. So if you're looking for cinnamon's brushes there, they will ship to Canada. Uh, right. That's it's in Australia and everywhere else. They ship around the world. And they have one flat rate. It's like $25 or something for... For international. For international. They just do that in a flat rate. And we're hoping to see more of that. You know, the thing about YouTube is, is it brings the world closer together. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to really suggest to Jerry's that they think about an international shipping policy, uh, maybe um, work with some of these big companies. That, yeah. You know, when you do a lot of work with FedEx or um, UPS, they owe you. Yeah. They owe no. you big time. I know. So years ago, it comes down to tariffs, and it comes down to the international trade. And as, the, as those things work out, I'm sure... Uh, we want to sell everywhere, you know. Uh, that's that's just the way, that's the way it is. It, uh, but I'm sure it's a little bit more complex. Um, I think I don't know. It's probably. I mean, yeah. There's, uh, there's duty reasons. and stuff. People pay duty, and there's reasons. I mean, everybody. Yeah. Everybody wants the business, right? I mean, as soon as you. Yeah. Know. I, I, shoot, if it was up to me, I'd sell anywhere. Now he's doing what he calls his flat dry brush. I want you yep. to see this, you guys, where he's putting the paint on the brush and this is not white this is naples yellow but yep. it looks white doesn't it do you see that you see how he's and putting that I, on there because i've built up textures i'm just dragging gently and it just gives me these nice little beautiful little marks and it's just going to hang gently and catch on a few things uh, much the way light kind of catches edges on things and so you're holding your brush very flat yeah. I would prefer that right? as a palette knife, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you call it a palette knife. I call it my brush or my tool. It's a. Uh, it just works. So. Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't want people to readjust their sets thinking they're looking at a brush. I gotcha. He does this to me all the time. You just have to ignore him. <laughs> it's a sock folder. He's a sock folder. Gotcha. That's right. You He's are a sock, sock folder, folder, aren't you? I'm afraid I am. Uh, yeah, but if, you know when we're going on a holiday, he's great because he can get all the stuff in the suitcase really easy. Yeah. And I'm still trying to figure out. He says, "Leave him, give me that stuff," and he can put it all in the suitcase. It wasn't fitting for me, and it all goes in with like lots of room to spare mm -hmm. when he's through folding. You know, so I mean, everybody should have a sock folder in their, in their life. You gotta right? have you gotta have a sock folder in your life. You know, it's just, uh, just generally are. You know, and of course we have artists that are sock yeah. folders too. But you know, it's very hard to be loose like this when you when everything has to be so perfect. And I want you to notice how Daniel is just reassessing and, and putting stuff in as he goes. And scraping and, and putting some extra value change. Um, just making sure there's some interest everywhere. And I may as well just go a little brighter than I normally would because my values are in the middle. I have a question. It's partly in French. It's from Lynn. I'm trying to okay. decipher what it is. A question yeah. for Daniel, if he want to do broadery, we transfer painting on canvas, or can we use paint or inks or some other medium on broadery canvas? Broadery, is that, an, is that a brand name? Or is that a style? I don't know. She's spelling it B-R-O-D-E-R-Y. That I'm not. I'm not well, no, familiar with the term. So maybe one of our one of our um, somebody our sharp got uh, moderators like Wendy can decipher yeah. it for us. Wendy, yeah. can you translate what was just asked? Or Lynn, <laughs> Lynn, try to go a little bit more English for me, honey. Oh. Yeah, we got it. We, we we don't understand the question, but you know we're happy to answer it. I speak Texan. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. afraid this is uh, Quebec. Ah, oh, I see. Which isn't quite Texan. No, no. Ah, definitely. they're thinking it's an embroidery canvas. Ah, there we go. Embroidery canvas. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, now, embroidery canvas. 
I don't know. I've never... I mean, canvas is canvas. Well, this uh, is like a plastic canvas. Oh, Have you gotcha. Seen those? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so that mesh type stuff. That yeah, it's really it's, it's big holes. Yes. You know, typically. Yeah. You can probably paint on that. You can, sure. you can paint on it. Uh, I don't know how well... It would You're going to get away without the holes? Yeah. Um, it will accept paint. Um, All right. How, how to transfer a painting to an embroidery canvas is what they're trying to do. Oh, okay. So that you're going to embroider the painting. Right. Oh, See, we're, gotcha. we're working it through. We're getting are we working we're it getting through? through. Getting we are there. working it through. All right. We are working it through. Um, yikes. That's what I'm going to have to think on to, you know, a nice smart way to do it. But transfer paper would work. Um... Now, see, if it was me, I had a program, take a picture of it, and it would give me the color and yeah. do a whole embroidery pattern for me. Yeah, see? That's there's, how that, there, there's apps I for that. Like that. I like that. That's how a that. sock folder would address that's, the issue. All right. Well, <laughs> that's that's when I, I think a sock folder is a is a really handy guy to have around. There's probably, um, there's probably apps for that, and then you print it out, and then you just can... Well, I know there's programs for it. I have that. All right, Ginger. I am going to play with one of these Posca markers and finish this thing off because... Do you mind? No, absolutely uh -huh. not. No. If anyone hasn't seen these, these things are Posca. adorable and they're going to save me from having to show you how poorly I paint letters. Because now, um, you said they make those in a brush as well? Yes, they make these in a brush. They make them... Uh, I, I actually love, 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 love the brush tip, but this one is exactly right. No, 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 no. Yeah. All right, let me show you what not to do. All right. <laughs> you, never, you always leave the cap on when you're shaking because you can spray you it can spray across, it everywhere. The, across the thing. Having had that I'm happen, an artist. Come on. All right, you know, and you shake it for like a minute. Now, here's the thing. You don't smash the tip down. You gently pump it, right? <laughs> because otherwise you have no tip to write with because they don't have replacement uh. tips for any of this, right? And the first thing you want to do is turn it upside down like this and do a couple of air things like that. You burp then it. You burp it. you got to burp it. And then let's find something we can we can write on. Now we're just going to come like this and gently, very gently press. pump it just to, until the paint comes out. And um, a lot of times people think, well, I bought one of these dumb things and it doesn't work. Well, it will. See, there now the is. paint's kind of... So All right, you're awesome. All right. Awesome. Well, <laughs> you <I'm> are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, now. Okay. All right. So t tell us about this, what you're doing. All right. There is a spot in Houston, my favorite part of the entire city. Um, we have a bridge downtown, and it's called the Be Someone Bridge. Uh, because some absolutely brilliant, brilliant graffiti artist actually wrote the words be someone gigantically across one of our train bridges. And it is my favorite place in all of Houston. And it is my favorite thing in Houston is the be someone bridge. And so I had done a painting for an event recently and I did the be someone bridge uh, while it was flooded because that entire freeway flooded and that whole area was underwater and it was one of the most heartbreaking moments of all of the flooding and if you google the be someone bridge in Houston you'll actually see pictures of it and the water was up nearly up to the top of the bridge um, like you could just barely see and, and the freeway would be down here on the on the painting and um, it's something I see every time I drive into Houston and so I didn't really plan this but because I did just do a similar design was that writing for you? you yeah no it's, it's writing great and I'm gonna grab a black one in a second and just give it a little bit of a highlight and okay. um, this is something that you know I love the message of be someone. I saw it the first time I ever came to Houston and said, man, I want to live here. And um, I don't know. It's just something that every time I see it, it's an inspiring, you know, you don't often see a lot of inspiring, you know, graffiti on, you know, sides of bridges and things. And that message just, I it just resonates. So um, as we're recovering from one of the worst uh, natural 
disasters in uh, U.S. history here, which seems really weird because everything is back to normal, it seems. You know, there are still people that, that aren't in their homes yet. There they're are still they're roads homeless. that are still... Um, Out. And there are pockets that are still flooded and will be flooded for months. Uh, people will be away from their homes for months, and it's heartbreaking. And I try never to forget, and I'm committed to never forget what's going on elsewhere. I'm dry. My store is dry. My ride to work now is dry. Uh, but two miles down the road... People are accessing their homes in boats, so and they will be for for quite some time. And so, I am going to dedicate this one to everyone in Houston because Houston has inspired me um, during this whole tough time. Uh, now you said gotta you make sure I'm spelling it right. Good Lord, I'm talking and doing this. Uh, you said you did a painting of this before. I just actually sold one at auction this weekend or at, at a show this weekend for charity. Do you charity. have a picture of it? Uh, about it? I have one on my phone. I don't know if it's going to uh, translate. Um, and a wonderful person bought it within the first few minutes of the show opening. And um, I had been able to manage um, to get two paintings done for this charity event and uh, for this fundraiser for local area artists. And basically... It was really dark, not unlike this. It was, uh, it was just something that, you know, following the news feeds uh, everywhere um, during the storm and watching all of it, the one shot that kept coming up that, that kept breaking my heart was my favorite bridge and seeing it underwater uh, or almost underwater and just seeing how high the waters really were. And so... Um, there you go. There you go, and this one's your black. No, it's silver. You have a black one right here, and here's a nice little fine tip, and I'll get just a little bit of edge. I'm not a big outliner generally, but for letters, I'm going to do it. It'll be a little easier to translate. Everybody is thanking you for coming this evening. We appreciate your sharing of your knowledge. Did you know you had knowledge, Daniel? No, I had no <laughs> idea, but I appreciate the sentiment. Absolutely. And I apologize to the original artist who did the Be Someone Bridge. Uh, you've inspired me, and I have brutalized your wonderful graffiti letters. And so uh, please forgive. Um, it's done out of love. Uh, oh, I love it. I think that's great, and I think that's absolutely perfect. You can be sure to use that to sign your name too. You can right. use that wonderful. The Posco pens. The reason we like them is that they. Th tomorrow this will still write, and next month this will still write. I've gone through. I can't tell you how many pens, different pens, and they they, they dry up and then they're worthless, and and you spent three or four bucks on a pen and it's gone. What I like about these is, unlike some other painting pens that I've found, they don't dry immediately. So you've got about five minutes to wipe it off and give it a new thought and then once it's dry it's totally permanent there we go all right so that's awesome we that is just absolutely super you want to zoom in on that john for us i can do that and i'll move this palette out of the way let me find my zoomer john's going to move in on this this is just absolutely beautiful and uh, that's that was houston during the floods and this is the piers and yeah fantastic and, and this is a man that's very familiar with this bridge. So John's kind of zooming in on that. We won't see it on the monitor. We want to thank everybody for coming. Again, we want to say if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. Be sure to visit, uh, if you're in Houston, be sure to stop down at Jerry's Iron Rama and visit Daniel. If you have any questions, he's the guy. Daniel, I'm going to give you one of my favorite things here. So I might cover towels. Try this on yes. your hands. This takes the paint right off. I mean, they should pay me. Nobody pays me to say this, but these are my... I tend to Amazon sold out on these. I mentioned it one time, and they sold out. But Amazon these, should pay you. They should. I'm telling you what these these towels take the paint off your fingers. I mean, they're just perfect. They just they clean up your hands in seconds, and they've got like aloe, and they don't leave your hands yeah. feeling crummy. This feels you, nice. Uh, those are, and they'll clean the brushes. Like for instance, you know, yeah. you can rub the brushes on yeah. them, and then they'll clean your knives clean and everything. Clean my Excalibur. Yeah, you know, clean your Excalibur. And I want to thank you for all my nice oh. knives he brought, and he. You know, gifted me the paints, and I feel yeah. like 
I feel like I should, that little brush that, that you like so well from Cinnamon, I feel like I should gift <laughs> this to you. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 oh. whoa. <laughs> whoa. Uh, I, I think so. When he, I'll tell you what, I think so, Daniel. Oh, well, you like you. this so much. I, I do, think I'm gonna, I do, I do. I know that you're, you're not I, I to think that you, Ginger. Yeah, I, uh, I, I am going to play with that uh, a we'll little bit later it. when I go back and start painting in oils later tonight. Are you see? I think oh, you're yeah. gonna, no. I've yeah. got another charity event coming up this weekend, and I've got a bunch of. Yeah. I, I have an awful lot of started paintings and not a lot of finished ones, so I've got I've got more work to do. There's a lot of artists that still need help. No, well, we, appreciate we appreciate that. So thanks very much. Remember, tomorrow night we're gonna we're gonna get away from the doom and gloom and paint some flowers. Yeah, sorry for the doom and, and gloom. And, and it's all right. No, we, everybody said we're gonna paint these flowers tomorrow night on a eight by ten canvas, and we've got some great. We've got a wonderful demonstration, beautiful, I don't think, did I bring it over here, that one with the, um, uh, oh yeah, I've got to show you this for sure. Um, this is a painting that we're going to be releasing. This this video took me a long time to do, and it, we've got about 12 hours just in compiling it before we get it up on YouTube. We're hoping this will be up um, by Friday or Saturday on YouTube, and it it's featuring the Art Sherpa brushes, all these beautiful brushes. You need the can here. Yeah, uh, she yeah. gave me this whole set to try, and we're featuring these brushes with this. So we're down here like that, right? And I'm showing you the different ways to use them mm -hmm. and why we love those brushes so much. And um, anyway, so if you get a chance, uh, be sure to look for this painting. Uh, I don't think I've got a good title for that. If anybody's got a good title, give it to me quickly so I can put it up. We'll give a good title for this one for probably Friday or Saturday release, probably about 8.30 in the morning on YouTube. Friday or Saturday, we're going to get that up, all right? With and any luck course, at all. If, you know, if the cows still fly or whatever the expression <laughs> is, right? Yeah, the you cows know? still fly. I love a ginger. <laughs> I think on that note, we'd like to thank uh, Daniel for joining us once again. Always glad to be here. And, and um, leave, leave the, now, don't be messing with the painting anymore because I'm going to turn you guys off. Okay. okay. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye, you guys. Bye, everybody. And you guys are gone. All right. I'm going to mute you. All right, everybody. We'd like to thank you for joining us and hanging in there through our ups and downs with the YouTube. We will be back tomorrow. And we're going to have this full lesson up on our website, hopefully without interruptions and no problems. When pigs fly, as they say. As soon as we can. Thank you, everyone, and have a good evening.